Hello, my name is Michelle Morand. I'm a precision cancer medicine educator and advocate, and I'm here with precision cancer medicine research specialist, Alexander Roland, otherwise known as the cancer guy. Uh, Alex has prepared a short presentation for you uh, specific to aspirin and colon cancer, as you see here. Um, he's gonna share some recent studies with you that'll help you to understand uh, the combination between these two things and how to make use of this very important data. Alex, go ahead. Tell us all about it. Yes. Well, um, aspirin has really been um, uh, shown to be a bit of a wonder drug in some ways. Uh, it definitely, it's huge in the cardiovascular and heart attack world, but definitely it, it seems to have a role in cancer. Okay. Um, and I'll explain how that works. All right. So um, there's lots of data on aspirin use and different cancers and how it slows down certain cancers you know some of the trials panned out some of them didn't pan out um, there's a lot of back and forth um, but definitely in um, for example uh, colon cancers and you know patients that have lynch syndrome which is a um, you know alteration in certain genes that create a susceptibility to colon cancer it seems to be quite valuable what I want to talk about specifically is colon cancer and a study called um, that was part of, uh, it's actually a, a subcategory of a bigger study called the ImmunoReact study. Uh, this is a, a multi-center observational study where they looked at a bunch of different features about people's cancers and so on. I won't get into the study, but um, this little um, arm of the study showed that long-term daily use of aspirin helps prevent the development and progression of colorectal cancers. Hmm. Um, so the ImmunoRAC study. So basically what they did in this study is they found that the tissue samples from patients who had used aspirin had two key qualities that were missing in those who did not take aspirin. Um, in colon cancer patients, this is specifically, is um, they had uh, less cancer metastasis to the lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. And they also had a higher infiltration of immune cells into the tumors with the, with the, with the samples from patients or compared with the samples um, mm -hmm. to patients that didn't use aspirin. So mm -hmm. it showed that aspirin was sort of triggering the immune system to uh, target the tumors in a, in a, a better way. So in other words, the aspirin takers um, who had colorectal cancer, cancers had lower rates of metastasis and higher rates of immune infiltration into the tumors um, that showed that the immune system was actively trying to fight the cancers. Mm -hmm. So um, more importantly, and, you know, everything in cancer requires a defined mechanism. Um, so further analysis of the patient's tumors showed that the aspirin was causing an increase in something called CD80, also known as cluster differentiation 80, um, on certain immune cells. High CD80 enhanced the capacity of the cells to alert other immune cells to the presence of tumor-associated proteins. So okay. in other words, this is, um, you know, the... the Immune cells talk with each other. They communicate with each other. They share information about, you know, the bad cells, kind of like a police force would, or you know, some sort of uh, law enforcement of the of the body. But importantly, the high levels of CD8 expression um, were also found in healthy rectal tissues, suggesting a pro-immune surveillance effect of aspirin. In other words, if you have this higher CD80, uh, it, it shows that you have a reduced risk of developing colorectal cancer. Mm. So um, I'll talk about the mechanism of CD80. Now, CD80 has many different uh, uh, roles, but in this particular role, it was expressed transiently on the immune cells involved in attacking the cancers. So it was expressed on the activated B cells and macrophages and the dendritic cells. Um, another thing um, that is also uh, important to note is that the CD80 is downregulated in most cancer cells. And more importantly, the loss of CD80 alone is sufficient to allow cancer cells to escape the immune system and to impart energy and apoptosis to tumor infiltrating T cells. So these T cells are called TILs, tumor infiltrating T cells, that were entering the tumor to kill it, um, were, being, were being shut off if they didn't have high CD80. Um, energy basically means it's the absence of the normal immune response to antigens. And apoptosis mm -hmm. is what we call programmed cell death, where the cell gets recycled. You know, losing this CD8 or having low CD8 expression um, definitely benefits the tumors. And the aspirin, aspirin seems to raise the expression. That's CD80, that's the mechanism, yeah, in colon tissue, yeah. Okay. Um, here's a little diagram. Um, 
I want you to just look at A and you can see how these receptors work. APC stands for antigen presenting cell. This yeah. is a cell that takes part of the tumor, processes it, and um, through a process called TAPS, um, a very complex process, tumor uh, associated uh, presentation or uh, yeah, um, ant antigen presentation. It's basically a process where these cells break down pieces of the tumor, um, modify them, and then present them to the T cells that actually go in and kill the tumors. Yeah. And they say, this is what you need to look for. Kill any cell that has this molecule on it. Yeah. And so in order to make that communication, the cells have to interact with each other. And so uh, right here, you can have, this is the, the docking station um, that it uses to attach the T cell. But right up here is a CD80. And yeah. you can see how important it is in that interaction. And so when you don't have that interaction, even if the, even if the uh, tumor cells are presenting the tumor cells, you, you don't have that interaction, um, then there's no way that they're going to attack the tumor cells. There's two different cases of that. So you have to have that interaction of CD80. Okay, right. What was also interesting is that um, high levels of CD80 expression uh, were found in the healthy rectal tissues. And this suggests a preventative effect of aspirin. So in other words, it's increasing CD80 in the normal tissues and can likely um, prevent this. So um, previous research, um, and I put the references uh, from quite some time ago, 2011, um, previous studies showed that treatment with any aspirin dose between 75 and 500 milligrams a day reduced the 20-year risk of colon cancer by 24% and the colo colorectal cancer associated mortality by 35% uh, with increasing mm -hmm. benefits observed with longer durations of treatment. So the longer you took it, the better the benefit mm -hmm. was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's previous data. Mm -hmm. um, in this study... Uh, it was quite interesting. They found that um, the reduction in colorectal cancer incidence was largely confined to the proximal or right-sided um, colon. And so proximal and distal or right and left-sided colon cancers are actually very different diseases. And that's because the uh, proximal and transverse colon are derived from one type of cell and the distal colon is derived from a completely different type of cell. And so they, they are actually different cancers. They're different diseases, even though they are part of the colon, the colon is kind of spliced together, uh, three different parts. It's the distal, the transverse, it connects the, the distal and the proximal, and then the proximal. So um, this benefit was largely in the proximal. Um, this is important because um, proximal tumors are have a much worse prognosis than the distal tumors. Okay, so this so, is okay. Yeah, this is a benefit. So, um, what's important here is the hazard ratio. Um, I've explained the hazard ratio in other videos. I apologize, I didn't explain it in this one. I should have. Hazard ratio basically means is there a difference between the treated and the non treated? And a hazard ratio of one means no difference, a hazard ratio of more than one means there's no benefit and it's worse, and a hazard ratio of less than one means it's beneficial. So a hazard ratio of, of 0 0.45 means a 55% uh, reduced risk of developing colorectal cancer. Mm -hmm. Now, in the distal side here that they looked at, the hazard ratio is 1.10. Um, I don't think it's a worse situation. Um, but what they did find is that because there's a range between 0 0.73 and 1.64, mm -hmm. um, you always see a range in hazard ratios. So while there's no effective aspirin in the risk of, re of rectal cancer, the distal rectal cancer, there appeared to be reduced risk um, among those with a treatment duration of at least five years. Um, this is not surprising. I would expect to see this, and that's because the aspirin is poorly absorbed in the distal colon. It's, it's much better absorbed than the proximal colon. Okay, all right, I understand. So in other words, if you wanna get that benefit um, in distal, and um, you know, left-sided colorectal cancer, you have to have a duration of at least five years of aspirin. So okay. it just takes longer for it to have that cumulative effect. Right. Um, sure. Yeah. And so, you know, as we as we know that the the concentration of all orally administered aspirin can be much lower uh, than the rest of the colon. Sure. The just by how long it takes to get through and what's left. Yeah. And it's basically, yeah, it's going to be filtered out before it gets down there. Hmm. 
So, uh, is summary there a question of aspirin suppositories or something? Is there? Well, you know, that's that's obviously that? something that I thought of too. Um, I can't confirm that it can get absorbed that way. Um, yeah. uh, you know, definitely that would be a thought process, but I don't know if that's something you want to. You want to do without having the data that's for sure of course no no um, no i'm not suggesting yeah. it i was just wondering if there was some somebody had looked into that mm -hmm. yeah um yeah. so in other words aspirin is cheap easy to access and has proven preventive benefits from for a type of cancer that is often not diagnosed until late stage mm -hmm. um and daily aspirin is something you could do from home to reduce the risk of this disease um obviously you want to make sure that you know if you don't if you have a bleeding disorder or something like that you don't want to be taking aspirin Always check with your pharmacist before taking something that, uh, you know, make sure it doesn't have a uh, contraindication with any of the other drugs you're on. Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, I mean, this is just another benefit of aspirin that I think is is um, is really uh, something that needs to be promoted. Yeah, especially because it, there's obvious benefits. There's obvious benefits uh, over time. Yeah. Uh, so the longer and again, cheap, easy to access the start today if you're not already doing it. And I guess what what you're also showing here is even if you already have cancer. Mm -hmm. There is evidence to show that this does help. It kind of wakes your immune sy system up by producing more mm -hmm. of that CD80 or some such thing. Yeah. Um, yep. And so it's going to help your body fight the cancer better. So um, benefits both for prevention and to help with your care if you already have a diagnosis of colon cancer. Um, and obviously, the sooner the better we get started on something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. All right. Anything else you want to add about this, Alex? Um, well, you know, I've heard many times over the years, um, you know, once you hit 50, you should start taking a statin to reduce your cholesterol levels and an aspirin. Okay. Um, and it seems to be really involved with longevity, both of these drugs. Okay. Right. So there are things, well, that's a topic for another day. Uh, there are things we can do from a diet perspective, lots of lifestyle-y things that will help mm -hmm. also with cholesterol reduction. But yeah, I appreciate that, that these are these are two things that you can do that are quite easily accessible that can help reduce the risk of other problems that are commonly associated with aging, like cancer. Um, okay, thanks, Alex. This is a pre uh, very much appreciated. Lots of people will benefit from knowing about this for sure. Um, so you see this little slide here, folks. If you or someone you know is struggling with cancer and wants to make sure you're doing everything you can, um, Alex and his team um, really provide an exceptionally thorough second opinion. Review your medical records, uh, look at all possible treatment options, uh, meet with you for an hour, produce a, a nice written report with references for you uh, about those options. So I highly recommend that. Well worth your time. There's also a free. I can't guarantee we're going to look at all possible treatment options in the in the one hour that we get, but we'll yeah. we'll look at as many as we can. Okay, thank you for qualifying. <laughs> See again, the science guy here. Um, <laughs> right. So but numerous, you will come away. I see these reports after these consultations, yeah. and we'll definitely um, find something. We almost always do. Exactly. Um, so uh, also we have an online uh, education and advocacy program that is totally free. Um, join us, um, send us notes, questions, comments, be well educated about all of your options and how to advocate for them. That's the whole purpose of this course. And of course, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Stay informed, uh, new videos every week. And if there's something you'd particularly like us to make a video about, just post it in the chat and we will do our best to do so and let you know when it's done. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate you making this video for everybody. Okay. Thanks. Bye.